make a difference six months can make if you consider the last six months in the graphic card market. I was contemplating whether to buy GTX 950 now and one later to get an acceptable level of performance, something closer to GTX 970 and BVR ready or buy GTX 960 which was going to be a compromise but we can wait it out till some better things come. But in came RX 480 and managed to shake the whole market. It equaled the performance of GTX 970 in older games and managed to outperform it in newer games that uses new API like DirectX 12 or Vulkan. And the best thing about it is AMD managed to launch RX 480 at GTX 960 launch price. AMD RX 480 literally forced Nvidia to bring ahead the launch of GTX 1060. Now we have a card that costs much less than the launch price of GTX 970 and performs very close to GTX 980. Of course, me being in Sweden, I don't have access to AMD RX 480 at $200 nor NVIDIA GTX 1060 at $249. I got this GTX 1060 from Gigabyte at $2800 Swedish kroner, which is close to $335 Swedish prices. The cheapest RX 480 reference card was almost available at same price. You can watch more details in this video. The original idea was to do a benchmarking video and show you the results. As usually, the value segment cards are both cheap and feel cheap, but that is absolutely not case with this card. This is really well made and almost shares everything with more expensive Gigabyte G1 gaming cards. This really feels premium. Finally, the last component which will make our setup complete. I present to you the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1060. May the force be with you. Most of the newer graphic cards occupy two slots in your cabinet instead of just one. And that's exactly the number of slots that are available in our mini ATX case. The slots can be unlocked using a single thumb screw. Time to open our cabinet to add the final component. If you have been following my videos about this build, you know what's exactly inside. If not, then this might be a good time to start watching the series. We chose the Fractal Design Node 304 cabinet because it supports a full-size graphic card despite being a mini ITX case and also has a very good ventilation with dust filter for the same. We chose the Fractal Design Integra and Power Supply because it is only 140mm in length leaving us enough room to add a full length graphic card. This is time when all the decisions that we have taken earlier are going to be put to test. Time to finally install the graphic card. Loosen the thumb screw. Push the slider up and remove the pre-installed plates. Now time to add the graphic card. Step 1. Remove the cover for PCI Express connector of the graphic card. Before installing, you need to make some space for the graphic card for which you might have to adjust the cabling you have done earlier. Insert the graphic card inside the cabinet. Place it over the slot and press it down. You will have to connect the 8 pin PCI Express connector. Now press the slider down and tighten the screw. With this, we are done with the installation of graphic card in our mini ITX case.